You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 6. New details this morning about the high school shooting suspect in Texas. What investigators say was in his personal journal. The future of the Bayfront and the Van Wazel is up in the air. This is a live look at the Performing Arts Hall this morning. We'll, a little bit later, we'll have details about who can have a say in the future of the area. And lava spilling directly into the ocean now in Hawaii. Now there's a new health threat for those who live nearby. Good Morning Suncoast starts right now. <coughs> Monday, 6 o'clock, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. We're going to turn to John Scalzi now for the weather that includes more rain. Yeah, surprise, surprise, right? That's a shocker. Yeah, more heavy rainfall we really can't use anymore, don't want anymore. Some of the rivers have seen dramatic rises over the last 24 hours. And we also have some uh, some of the drainage canals and uh, sloughs are beginning to fill as well. So uh, another heavy rain event yeah, probably would not be a good thing. We're looking at uh, six inch rainfalls from two of our weather watches reporting in. Richard in Northport and Becky in Old Mayaka both had over six inch rainfalls this weekend. And um, certainly the potential for more rainfall does exist. We're starting to see a few popping up here locally now near Arcadia. But so far, that river of air hasn't produced a lot of rain over the sun coast this morning, but that is going to change. You can see the showers that start south of Cuba and lift all the way through the Florida Straits and then into the peninsula of the state itself. That's what we call an atmospheric river of air, and it's very clear here on our satellite loop coming up from the south, from the tropics, in an area that we'll have to watch as we head into the weekend for some possible tropical development. Models are all over the place on this one and have been for days. So the, the main threat, if it, even if we did get some minor tropical development, would be a continuation of the heavy rainfall this weekend. We'll be talking about that in detail in a few minutes. Temperatures generally in the low 70s. They're going to hold there as well. Rain chances this morning, well, they're there, but it will be mostly spotty stuff. Later this afternoon, thunderstorms, though, are in the mix. We'll talk about the forecast in a sec. Okay, thank you, John. Let's check outside there at the uh, live camera at St. Armand Circle. There's a scene right now as you're waking up. Not a lot of activity there. As you know, it gets very busy as the day progresses right now. Very peaceful. Here are the birds chirping out there and some wet roads as well. Let's check the maps now. First alert traffic showing some issues there on the uh, Green Bridge as you cross from Palmetto into downtown Bradenton. Otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking the upper half of Sarasota County. Little issue there on, uh, actually look at that. There's a, an accident at University and 75 that just came in. A rolled over vehicle at 213 University Parkway and I-75 southbound. Near the diverging diamond there. So we'll check on that and have more for you as it becomes available. Also Fruitville eastbound as you leave 301. And then checking our final map to the south. Little blip down there on 776 down by Englewood and uh, El Jobin. We have breaking news this half hour. Moments ago, FHP released details about a hit and run late last night. Here's what we know now. It happened about 11.30 p.m. on Tamiami Trail near the intersection of Short Drive. Officers say somebody was walking across 41 when a maroon SUV struck that person and took off. The victim was taken to the hospital. If you see a maroon SUV with front end damage, you're asked to call Sarasota Police. Well, new developments this morning in the Santa Fe school shooting as the Texas community mourns the loss of the 10 victims during Friday's attack. We're now learning more about the suspected shooter. Investigators have been reading through some of his personal journals, and they say he carefully studied previous mass shootings, allegedly incorporating aspects of some of those into his own attack. A classmate who knew the suspect says he never seemed unusual. Never in my life would I have assumed it'd be him. Now, investigators are still trying to piece together a motive for Friday's attack. Well, that shooting has provoked a response from a Sarasota state representative. Margaret Good wants to have a special session now on education funding. She sent a letter to Florida's Secretary of State. In it, she wrote, a lack of adequate resources threatens the education and safety of our public school children. Good wrote on social media, we can't expect schools to implement new security measures and provide the education on our students to, that they deserve without adequate funding. Now, the state already approved over $150 million in school security funding this past session. That's about three times the previous year. 
Well, it is your chance to have a say in the future of Sarasota's Bayfront. The group called the Bay Sarasota is looking at all 53 acres along the Bayfront, but the Van Wesel right now is getting most of the attention. There are two events today if you want to inspect plans or give your feedback. Marla Spence is live with a preview. Marla? Good morning, guys. Yeah, today, people who live in this community will be coming right here to the iconic Van Wezel. They'll be here to give their input on design plans for the Performing Arts Hall. Now, design plans for 53 acres of the Sarasota Bayfront were released last month. The Van Wezel was not included in those plans, and that upset a lot of people. So organizers of the Bay Sarasota Development went back to the drawing board and came up with three new plans that do include the Performing Arts Hall. But people associated with the Van Wezel say the redesign isn't enough. They want a new facility altogether, one that will let them compete with other more modern performing arts centers. The decision now lies with the city commission to either renovate or rebuild the Van Wezel. Coming up at 630, we're going to be telling you how you can put in your input on the future of the Van Wezel as well as the Sarasota Bayfront. Reporting live in Sarasota, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. A group that helps serve a thousand meals a week to the homeless in the area is looking for a new facility now in downtown Bradenton. Downtown Ministries has been operating out of the Central Christian Church parking lot for the last three years, but the church was sold and the new owners do not want to continue the relationship. So they're looking for a new place to serve daily breakfasts. Downtown Ministries serves about 200 meals each day to the working poor and the homeless. The group's co-director says the love and encouragement they can offer goes a long way. It's a huge, uh, a huge thing for them because not only are we filling physical needs for uh, breakfast, for clothing, for hygiene items, for bicycles and so much more, but they start their day here. Well, this has really been a blessing to me since I've, you know, got to my situation and, you know, being homeless and everything. Now, those in need can get uh, clothing, medication, personal hygiene items. The organization even passed out 250 refurbished bikes last year. Another organization called Narcotics Anonymous meets nightly on the church property. We're told they will also have to find a new place to operate. Well, consumer alert this morning. If you live in Venice, if your utilities come from the city, your bill may be going up. That's if the city council adopts a new five-year rate adjustment plan. It calls for a $2 increase in the first year and then a 2.5% increase in the following four years. The council is expected to discuss the plan tomorrow. Now, if it gets approved, it would go into effect this August. On the road today, the Bolts prepare for Game 6 tonight of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Washington Capitals. They took a three games to two games lead in the series after Saturday's big win, and they are now just one win away from going back to the Stanley Cup. The puck drops tonight at 8 p.m. in D.C. This is exciting. They're back in. I know. I love this. Not since 2015. Yeah. Good hockey. Still ahead, we're just a little more than a week out from the official start to hurricane season. That's right. Will the state of Florida have enough money if another devastating storm hits the season? We've got the answer for you coming straight ahead. Here's a peek outside our window at the Rosemary District and a pretty sky developing there. What's on tap today, John Scalzi? Yeah, some of those clouds are going to give way to showers and thunderstorms, no doubt about it. We've had a little breaks in the clouds here and there, and our rain chance not that great this morning, coming in at about 20%, but still an isolated shower or two around the region. Not out of the question, but as we head into the afternoon, thunderstorms are likely. Even showers that produce some heavy rainfall, so a 60% chance of afternoon rainfall. And over the course of the next several days, the thunderstorm outlook from the Sphere Storm Prediction Center continues to show the Florida Peninsula in heavy potentials for some, at times, heavy rainfall. We'll have the complete forecast details coming up in a few. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the nation first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Picking out a new ceiling fan? Yeah. That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't-do-it-yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. 
and call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Peterson Toyota of Sarasota offers hundreds of models to choose from. And now you can take your shopping experience to the next level with SRQ+. You'll love its added benefits exclusively at Peterson Toyota of Sarasota or toyotaofsarasota.com. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. TrueStage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, TrueStage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through TrueStage. Call 1-800-842-7189 now. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So if you, if you look at the radar imagery here, you'll see something kind of instructive, and that's a, a couple of showers starting to pop up in the extreme easternmost sections of the Sun Coast. That is what we will see this morning, is that the showers kind of pop up almost anywhere, almost any time. The potential exists for an isolated light shower, maybe a moderate rainfall. But it's by afternoon that we'll see more of what's going on on the East Coast right now, and that's some heavier storms that can produce some fairly heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and the potential for even some pops of lightning as you head into the afternoon as well. So there are scattered showers near Arcadia where they really don't need it. The Horse Creek at Arcadia already exceeding Bankful by about a foot today. And also Little Manatee uh, near Mayak Ahead also going to exceed Bankful. Uh, just an indication that our rivers have really increased in uh, the requirements put on them for handling our runoff across the region. And they're in many locations already at kind of maximum capacity. So any additional heavy rainfall just exasperating that situation for, uh, for some localized minor flooding for the most part right now. We're looking at this stream of moisture that continues to lift north out of the Caribbean. That is a river, an atmospheric river of air. Atmospheric rivers are terms given to this kind of plume of continuous moisture that goes over the same area for a prolonged period of time. It's one of the ways that the Deep South gets a lot of its rainfall at times. And also California, you probably have heard in the news in the past, has seen these atmospheric rivers that uh, produce some localized flooding oftentimes. And again, over the course of the week ahead, that's what we'll be watching for. This little trough of low pressure that exists down in the Caribbean, some computer models suggest might see a little bit of a spin up there, a little bit of tropical development. It would be minor if it did, and computer models are all over the place as to whether it lifts out into the central Gulf waters or out into the Atlantic. But 
so let's, let's suppose that absolutely nothing happens. We're still going to get a lot of rain lifting northward over the weekend. And let's suppose something did happen. We're still going to get a lot of rain lifting north over the weekend. So regardless of any kind of minor tropical development, we're going to get some, I think, some heavy rainfall over the holiday weekend. We got some scattered showers in progress through the morning hours, most likely. Then as we head into the lunchtime hour, maybe we pick up an isolated thunderstorm or two. But it's really by later in the afternoon that we see some fairly strong thunderstorms activity perhaps with some gusty winds and heavy town pours of rain. That's certainly a potential today at about 60%. Winding down as we head into the nighttime hours and daytime heating goes away. We have a low pressure trough existing through the deep south. We have a big high pressure ridge near the Bahamas kind of directing our winds up out of the south. And we have a trough of low pressure in the Caribbean. All of that combining together to produce the potential of rain for several days. But as high pressure expands midweek, we may get a little bit of a break in the rainfall chances. It won't last long, though, as this wave of moisture down from the south lifts northward over the weekend and brings us those better rain chances. So several wet days, some midweek drying, and then possible heavy rain is something we'll monitor over the weekend. For the next 24 hours, our rainfall amounts are hand, we can handle them. You know, we're coming in maybe a, an inch or two of rain. That's a possibility. But then as we head into the weekend, we get some potential four, five, maybe even six inch rainfalls just as we saw over this weekend. And that's something we really don't want to see. It's time to dry out a little bit, right? We're looking at uh, winds out of the southeast at about five to 10. Moderate chop on your bay and inland waters, two foot seas. I say it's time to dry out, but that's really not in the forecast. This atmospheric river will continue right straight through most of the next, I'd say, 10, 12 days. 60% chance of showers today, 60% again tomorrow. A little chance to maybe dry out a tad as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Might even get a little bit more sunshine around here. But then as we head into the weekend, we'll watch for the potential of some heavy rains. We'll monitor the tropics for any kind of development. And certainly we'll uh, hopefully not see it, but we could see some rainfall totals that go right into the holiday weekend. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, John. Let's take a look outside to your first alert. Traffic starting to pick up just a little bit more out there. 301 starting to see a few more slowdowns, as is 41. As you pass by State Road 70 on 41, um, it's going to get a little bit slower on both the north and southbound lanes in that area. Then in Sarasota County, those roads aren't looking too bad out there. Starting to see a couple delays. A big one that we want to tell you about right there at University Parkway and 75. If we can bring that up real quick. I-75 southbound. There's a rolled over vehicle at exit 213, which of course is University Parkway. Again, I-75 in the southbound lane, there's a rolled over vehicle, and that, of course, is causing some slowdowns on your commute for you this morning. And then Fruitville Road, some slowdowns there as well, and start to see some of those usual delays on Clark Road as well. A little farther south in the area, those roads aren't looking too bad. Still a pretty smooth commute if you're heading towards Port Charlotte or Punta Gorda. It is 617, and that is your first alert traffic. Hurricane season is now 10 days away, and the Florida Fund that helps private insurers pay out claims after hurricane remains in good shape right now. Despite losses from Hurricane Irma, estimates show the Florida Hurricane Catastrophe Fund is worth about $17 billion right now. By the fund built up its reserves during a lengthy period when there were no hurricanes. By the way, there are about $2 billion in claims associated with last September's Hurricane Irma. Well, first it was destructive lava, then came the dangerous gas, and now this morning a new threat for residents of Hawaii's Big Island. When you combine lava and haze, you get... Lays. Mm -hmm. New word today, clouds of toxic fumes. Reporter John Lawrence has our story. It's been nearly three weeks since Hawaii's Kilauea volcano erupted. The output is still high. As long as it's putting out lava, there's chance for other activity. To make matters worse, there's a new concern. It's called lays. The word comes from lava and haze, and it forms when scalding lava enters the ocean. The plume that's created from the hot lava entering the ocean, the seawater, you know, creates hydrochloric acid, and you got the glass particles in that plume, which is a breathing hazard, basically. In addition to lung problems, Lay's is also an eye and skin irritant. We know people are going in there. It's always a draw to go see the ocean entry being so close. We ask people to stay out of the area. Officials say it could be a while before a sense of normalcy returns to the island. The geophysical indicators, the earthquakes, the uh, surface changes are slowing, but they're not going away yet. Another concern, sulfur dioxide emissions have tripled, according to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. 
It's really um, allowing Madame Pelly to run its course. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast. A deadly attack for two mountain bikers. What exactly what happened on the trail? We're going to have the update on this one. Plus, Marla? And you can have a say in the future of the Sarasota Bayfront, including the Van Wazel. Today, there will be community meetings on design plans for the 53 acres of the Bayfront. I have a live report straight ahead at 630. 71 degrees right now and oh. chance of rain again today. In fact, a 60% chance of rain should see a high of 81 degrees. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you don't want to fall immediately into love, look away. If you don't want to awaken a desire for excellence, look away. If you don't want to be seduced, please look away. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Maserati Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. Tonight is the finale of American Idol on ABC7. During last night's show, we heard from all three finalists, Gabby Barrett, Caleb Lee Hutchison, and Maddie Poppy. Tonight, they'll each have a special duet. Caleb with Darius Rucker, Gabby with Luke Bryan, and Maddie with <laughs> Kermit the Frog. Wait, what? It all begins at 9 o'clock right here on ABC7. Oh. All right, so do you guys feel swimsuit ready? Well, the season is here, but if you don't feel in the best shape just yet, why not use your phone to help? That's right, the hottest trend right now in fitness are apps, and here's a few of the most popular. First up, the app Eat This, Not That. This one is designed to help you make better eating choices. It shows two similar foods and then asks you to guess which is healthier. Instantly, I would choose the unhealthy one. Next, My Fitness Pal. This is actually a really good one, too. It's a great app for toning up or losing weight. This one actually has a calorie counter, and the best part, you can actually calculate what you're eating and then match your workout to just work it all back off. Now, the last one on our list is Endomoto. This one is perfect for runners and bikers and walkers. This one can help you track all your route as well as your mileage. 
Well, two mountain bikers near Seattle were attacked over the weekend by a cougar. ABC's Gio Benitez has the bikers' conditions. In this morning's GMA First Look, a rare attack near Seattle. A cougar killing one mountain biker and injuring another. The two were biking down a remote road when a 100-pound male cougar began chasing them. At uh, some point, one of the victims uh, even uh, swung their bike toward the animal as it approached, and that caused it to run off into the woods. But moments later, it came back for the bikers and attacked. 31-year-old Isaac Cedarbaum, an avid biker seen here on Facebook, survived the attack. He told police the cougar let him go before chasing his friend into the woods. We have a second patient, probably another five miles up North Fork Road. His friend not able to escape. Authorities later finding the cougar standing over his body. The sheriff's office telling us the cougar was caught and killed. We'll have more on this story coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Bear presents Ordinary versus Overachiever. Bear Premium Plus. Bear through it all with a top rated paint at a great price. Right now, get incredible savings on Bear exclusively at the Home Depot. Walk barefoot without stepping on your kids' toys? Impossible. Amazingly delicious Briar's ice cream for 330 calories a pint? Now possible. New Briar's Delights. Indulge without all the guilt. Allergies with sinus congestion and pressure? You won't find relief here. Go to the pharmacy counter for powerful Claritin D. While the leading allergy spray relieves six symptoms, Claritin D relieves eight, including sinus congestion and pressure. Claritin D relieves more. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. You want a Maserati, but you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it at Sunset Maserati Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood, and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. 
designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. ABC7, the Suncoast's official Florida lottery station. You are watching Good Morning Suncoast at 6.30. This morning, we're hearing from a classmate of the suspected shooter in the Santa Fe school attack. A new glimpse today into what went through the suspect's mind as he planned that shooting. Plus, some Sarasota County High School students may soon have a chance to earn college credits before graduation. Find out which college is offering this opportunity. And the future of the Van Wezel is up in the air today. Our Marla Spence will join us live this morning with just how you can have a say in the future of that and the Sarasota Bayfront. Those stories and your first alert weather. Good morning, Suncoast starts right now. And good morning to you. Thanks for joining us or waking up with us. It is 6.30 on this Monday morning. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins. After all that rain on Sunday, John says more rain on the forecast today. Yes, indeedy. Looks like it, absolutely. And sometimes some heavy rainfall as well, which is just what we don't need because many of the rivers have already are filled to bankful and many of the d drainage ditches and sloughs and runoff canals and such as that are also handling almost as much water as they can. So we don't need more heavy rainfall, but we're likely to get it. Uh, Al, our Northport weather watcher, one of them, also reported in with an over six inch rainfall over the week. Weekend. So did Richard in Northport. Um, he came up with 6.63 inches, so obviously some heavy rainfall around. We've got some showers trying to build now in interior sections of Charlotte County and also in uh, and around the Arcadia area. Uh, we will probably see that throughout the morning hours. Hit and miss rainfalls popping up almost any time, almost anywhere. The showers exist really south of Cuba all the way up through the Florida Peninsula. It is a river of air and a river of atmospheric moisture that continues to bring us high rainfall chances. As we head into the afternoon, our rain chances kind of spike up to about 60%. We may get a day or two of brief relief from those showers, but check out what's going on in the tropics. That cluster of clouds down there, all of that moisture will be lifting north this weekend, providing us with, again, the potential of some heavy weekend rain, just like we had last weekend and the weekend before the weekend before so we've had a really a prolonged period of uh, heavy rain and ready to dry out a little bit we'll talk about maybe a potential dry out period this week coming up in just a second all right good to hear thank you john checking the situation there at st armand's circle here's a live shot a pretty picture there some blue skies and clouds in the background some traffic building there pretty palm trees that is the scene right there, dry roads, and also that construction project continues on a new parking garage behind the uh, Columbia Quadrant of the circle, if you will. All right, let's go to the maps right now. First alert traffic showing us some issues. Uh, State Road 64 eastbound as you cross over the Braden River and head toward I-75. Otherwise, not too busy so far in Manatee County. Checking the upper half of Sarasota County. We do have an ongoing issue to talk to you about right now at I-75 and University. The southbound lane, a rolled over vehicle at exit 213. So if you're coming south on 75, prepare for some congestion there due to the uh, lane blockage and rubberneckers as well. That is a busy spot already, made busier by that rollover. Let's go to the uh, farther south maps now into South County. Issues there between Nokomis and Venice on 41 in both directions and also farther south at the base of your screen down by uh, 776 in Charlotte County. Well, new details this morning on the school shooting in Santa Fe. We're hearing now from a student who knew the suspected gunman. Emotions also ran high last night at the Billboard Music Awards. ABC's Kenneth Gibson has a new development. Texas native Kelly Clarkson emotional as girl, she started the show with a call for action after the Santa Fe shooting. And once again, y'all, we're grieving for more kids that have died for just an absolute no reason at all. Why don't we not do a moment of silence? Why won't we do a moment of action? Why don't we do a moment of change? Why don't we change what's happening? As the Texas community mourns the 10 victims of the attack, we're learning more about the suspected shooter. Investigators pouring through his journal saying he carefully studied previous mass shootings, allegedly incorporating aspects of those massacres into his own attack. 
even wearing a trench coat, which was a hallmark of the gunmen at the Columbine Massacre. A fellow Santa Fe High School student says he knew the suspect and says he never seemed unusual at all. He seemed very calm and collective. And Clayton George says he never imagined the kid he got to know during football season would carry out a mass shooting at their school. Never in my life would I have assumed it'd be him. <laughs> One of the victim's mothers says the suspect had made unwanted advances on her daughter and believes that's why her daughter was targeted. Not even a week later, he just shoots everyone. Investigators this morning trying to piece together a motive for the attack. I believe the lieutenant governor of Texas weighed in on the debate over gun violence, insisting guns are not the problem. We have devalued life, whether it's through abortion, whether it's the breakup of families, through violent movies and particularly violent video games. Candace Gibson, ABC News, New York. Meantime, here in Florida, the state is forcing all districts to have a school resource officer in every school. Manatee and Sarasota counties are taking different approaches, though. Manatee County is still debating funding methods, while Sarasota County is moving ahead on hiring its own police department. Both districts also have work, are working on hardening school buildings with bulletproof windows and creating single entrance points as well. Well, what would you like to see on Sarasota's Bayfront? Today, it is your chance to weigh in and share your thoughts. The city is hosting two discussions, 8.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m., and most people want to talk about one issue, the future of the Van Wezel itself. Marla Spence is live from there with our preview. Marla? Good morning, guys. It's a busy day for those who are concerned about the future of Sarasota's Bayfront, including the Van Wezel. People who live in this community will be coming to the iconic Van Wezel. They'll be here to put in their input on the design plans for the Performing Arts Hall and Sarasota's Bayfront. Initially, the Performing Arts Hall was not included in the design plans for the 53 acres of the Bayfront, which upset a lot of people. After developers went back to the drawing board, they came up with three designs that included the Van Wezel. Today, people can stop by the Performing Arts Hall for a draft master plan presentation. That's where they'll be able to give their feedback on design plans for the Van Wezel and the Bayfront. The first meeting will be at 8.30 this morning and the other will be at 1.30 this afternoon. City commissioners will also be discussing the future of Sarasota's Bayfront today at a city commissioners meeting. It will be up to city leaders on whether to renovate or rebuild the Van Wezel. Reporting live in Sarasota, I'm Marla Spence for ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. This week marks one year since Florida's first diverging diamond opened at I-75 and University Parkway. Cost about $75 million, but the state says it's well worth it with traffic flow and safety. In fact, they said that state DOT figures indicate a big drop in the number of crashes around the interchange in the first 11 months of operation. As for the drivers, well, here's the reaction we heard. If they're supposed to get on the interstates or if it ends up being a turn lane, so there are different times where cars all of a sudden will slam on their brakes right in front of you. Tonight at 6, our Erica Jackson shares just how much accidents have gone down in the past year there. Earning college credits while still in high school sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Well, South Sarasota County high school students may have that opportunity in the future. The State College of Florida's Venice campus recently applied to create a charter collegiate high school. It's like dual enrollment with less traveling in between classes. High school students would attend SCF for two years, working towards both college and high school credit. That move would save students two full years of college tuition. Later this week, your chance to speak out about gun violence in the city of Sarasota. Thursday, police will hold a stop the gun violence meeting at the Robert L. Taylor Community Complex on 34th Street at Myrtle in Sarasota. It runs from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. An update now from Tallahassee. The state of Florida, as we told you last week, is suing drug companies that have steered more than a million dollars to politicians over the past 20 years. Attorney General Pam Bondi says the lawsuit is designed to recover damages from companies that have caused pain and destruction for Florida families. A new report shows 89% of those contributions went to Republican candidates or Republican committees. The leading donor was megacorporation Johnson & Johnson. Well, the hunt is over this morning for a fugitive that had been on the run for five months. The search for Tyrek Bell wanted in the death of a Northport teen is over. Bell is now in the custody, of course, of law enforcement after Sarasota police tracked him down Friday night on Cumberland Road in Venice. 
Bell is charged with aggravated assault, robbery, and the murder of 19-year-old Trent Bartle Thomas. Back in January, police say Bell and another man barged into a Northport home demanding money. Thomas tried to stop them, wrestling with one of them when he was shot from behind and killed. Bell's arrest comes just days after the U.S. Marshal Service announced a $1,000 reward for any information leading to his capture. New this morning, Pope Francis has revealed his latest picks to be cardinals in the Catholic Church. Eleven of the men chosen for the honor would be eligible to cast ballots in the secret conclave that would someday select Francis' successor. The latest group is the fifth batch of churchmen chosen by Francis to become cardinals since he was elected pontiff back in 2013. Still to come on Good Morning Sun Coast. The Congo, hoping for progress with an experimental vaccine planned to be administered today. We'll have details of that story when we come back. But first, let's take a live look outside. It looks like a beautiful day that is shaping up to be, but more rain back on tap. Right, John Scalzi? Yeah, kind of cloudy out there, and uh, some of the clouds producing a little bit of light drizzle possible throughout the morning hours, really almost anywhere, almost any time. But as we head into the afternoon, there certainly is the potential of thunderstorm activity and some heavier rain. 20% chance by morning, by noon, about 40%, 60% by 3 p.m. Okay, here's my picture of the day. This graph is of the Little Manatee River near uh, Mayaka Head. And check it out. We started on Mother's Day with about 10 cubic feet per second. That's about 75 gallons per second, right? That's a lot of rainfall. We're ending up right now at about a thousand, which means we're now at seeing about 7,500 gallons per second flowing through the Little Manatee River. Can't use any more rainfall, but we may see some heavy rain down the road. We'll talk about that in a second. Picking out a new ceiling fan? <laughs> That's a do it yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do it yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. Thank you. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Sparky. Get a Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings during the Jeep Celebration event. Shop the area's largest selection of new 2018 Jeep Wranglers or get the most awarded SUV of all time, a new Jeep Cherokee, for as little as $19,999. Find the path to your next great adventure in the all-new Jeep Compass for just $17,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking. Or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? Army National Guard soldiers serve to give back to their country and their community. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for benefits such as health and life insurance, education benefits, and retirement and VA home loan benefits. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So when you see a radar image like this, this one, with all of these rain showers at this time of morning, you know the atmosphere is juicy and primed for more showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with a little daytime heating. 
And that's exactly what we're going to see. Right now, our rain chance stands at about 20% across the region. And we have a few light showers trying to pop up here in the southeastern corner of the Sun Coast. But nothing really heavy. And I think for most of us, for the morning commute, it should be fine. I don't expect to see much in the way of rains. But later on today, this moisture plume lifting up out of the Caribbean, combined with a little daytime heating, will again provide us with about a 60% chance of some showers, thunderstorms, and at times the, could see some heavy rainfall develop under some of those storms. Could lead to some ponding on roadways right during the evening commute time. So uh, keep that in the back of your mind as you head home this evening. These showers and thunderstorms, you know how they can come up on you very quickly. And because they'll be slow movers, because of all the moisture, they have that potential of producing some fairly heavy rainfall in short order. We're also watching this kind of line of showers that's heavier down toward the Caribbean. Some computer models suggest that there may be a little bit of a spin up in that line of showers and perhaps even some tropical development as we head into the holiday weekend. Their models are really still kind of all over the place, but uh, it's something for us to watch as we head into the weekend. Regardless, it's going to bring us more rainfall. We have this morning about a 20% chance of scattered showers across the region. As we head into the lunchtime hour, though, we have a much better chance at seeing some of those showers produce some heavier rainfall at times. Maybe some pops of lightning, maybe some gusty winds with some of those storms. And then that exists right straight through the evening rush hour and into the early night. As the sun sets, things start to kind of wind down just a little bit. And I think as we wake up tomorrow morning, we might just do this all over again. Two days in a row, I think, of some potentially heavier rain falling. So this trough of low pressure is something we're going to be watching. With a high pressure ridge out in the Atlantic kind of building in, we have a couple of days of this southerly flow bringing us rainfall. But then as we head into midweek, maybe a little bit of a break, maybe a little drying out period. Just a couple of days. Rain chances will still be around, but they'll be reduced to maybe 30% or 20%. So that's, that's a good thing. We need that. But then it won't last long because this trough of low pressure will start lifting northward. And we'll watch it to see if there's any kind of tropical development down the road. Right now, the Hurricane Center is not pointing to any kind of development, but some computer models do, taking it as a spin-up low-pressure area, maybe even a tropical storm up through the central Gulf of Mexico. Some take it out into the Atlantic. Either way, the main impact on us, regardless of any kind of minor development, is going to be heavier rainfall as we head into, particularly, I think, Saturday, Sunday, and then maybe even a little bit on Monday, depending on the timing of the system. So it's something we're going to keep watching. Several wet days, midweek drying, and then that possible heavier weekend rain. Through the next uh, 24 hours to 48 hours, we get some rainfall amounts that could exceed a, an inch or two of rainfall. And, but it's really over the weekend that we start to see the rainfall chances increase. And by Monday, some places, I think, especially in South Florida, could see five, six, seven inch rainfall. So some significant rains on the way. Well, it's impossible to know right now exactly where those will pop up, uh, what part of Florida, but it's something we'll keep an eye on. If you're looking for something good, the fire danger index is continuing to show better chances of uh, continuing low index values over the next several days. Southeast wind at about five to 10 knots, and the forecast for the next several days keeps us wet. Then we dry out a little bit Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe Friday. And then we'll watch for the potential of heavy rain starting Friday night, but particularly Saturday and maybe into Sunday as well. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. Let's take a look at your first alert traffic. Certain to see a few delays out there, a little bit more than we normally see in Manatee County. 301 south and northbound coming in and out of Bradenton. Starting to see a lot of delays right now as we normally do. Also 75, that stretch right after 70, State Road 70 heading southbound. Lots of delays in that area for something that we're going to tell you about here in just a moment. Heading into Sarasota County, we do have a big delay right there on University Parkway to tell you about. Right there on University Parkway, exit 213, if we can pull that up. On the southbound lane, there was a rolled over vehicle. Again, southbound lane, I-75, right there at exit 213, University Parkway. There's a rolled over vehicle, so it is causing all kinds of delays right there in that area on southbound 75. Of course, a couple other delays, just some small ones to tell you about. 41, 301, Fruitville Road, those are starting to see some slowdowns as, as they normally do around this time. A little farther south in the air, if you're heading towards the Port Charlotte area, both 75 and 41 are pr running pretty smooth the farther south that you go. That is your first alert traffic. 
Starting today for the first time, an Ebola vaccine will be used to try and stop a current outbreak in the Congo. So far, 44 cases of Ebola have been reported there, most of those in a remote, a remote northern area that's hard to reach for aid workers. The death toll there has risen so far to 26. Health officials are hoping this vaccine will prevent the disease from spreading. More than 4,000 doses of the vaccine are already in the Congo and more are on the way. It's still in test stages though, but it was effective in the West Africa outbreak a few years ago. In almost 90% of those cases, the virus can be fatal and there is no treatment for it. New this morning, Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro won a second six year term, but not everyone's happy about that. Even though he won by 5 million votes, the country is in the midst of soaring prices, widespread hunger and rampant crime. Many countries, including the U.S., called the election a sham and said they would not recognize the results of Sunday's vote. Maduro has been in power since 2013, certainly a story worth watching. Yeah. Still ahead, your top seven before seven. And that, of course, includes a look at your first alert weather and traffic. And speaking of that weather outside, we're going to leave you right now before we go to break. This is a look outside. It looks really good, but as John Scalzi gives us one final wrap up to the weather, got some more rain on the way. It is 6.50. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast right here on ABC7. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. Excuse me a minute. Hi, Dad. No, don't try to get up. Hi, I'm Julie, a right-at-home caregiver. And if I had been caring for Tom's dad, I would have noticed some dizziness that could lead to balance issues. That's because I'm trained to report any changes in behavior, no matter how small. So Tom could have peace of mind. We'll be right there. We have to go. Hey, Tom, you should try right at home. They're great for us. The right care, right at home. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the MAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. With the Brinks prepaid MasterCard, it's easy to manage our money. I get a text alert every time our card is used, so we always know our balance. And we're protected from unauthorized transactions. Brinks gives us peace of mind. Introducing the Brinks prepaid MasterCard. With direct deposit, you can get your paycheck or government payments up to two days faster. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, time. Load money onto your card, and then shop online, pay bills, with Brinks, you can conveniently manage your money online and with the mobile app. Call now or go online to get your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. And in this TV-only offer, personalize your Brinks prepaid MasterCard with your photo for added security. Brinks knows what's valuable to you. Call right now to order your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. Call 1-800-287-3014. Or go online. Call now. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. It is 6.53, and here's your top seven before seven. First off, John's first alert forecast and more rain on the way, John. 
Absolutely right. We are looking again today at an out door forecast that features an umbrella as a necessary piece of equipment today. We'll have showers and thunderstorms. The first alert weather app also very valuable today as we'll have the potential of some gusty winds and some stronger thunderstorms likely later on this afternoon. It's 71 as you head out the door. It feels sticky out there though. Don't forget first alert weather app and you can always log on to mysuncoast.com for an updated forecast. Back to you. All right, number two, we've got an issue there on the roads. I-75 southbound or rolled over vehicle at the University Parkway exit. So be aware of that if you're heading southbound. You can see there at the top of your screen congestion is now building as you come from the north. All right, number three, community and city leaders are going to meet today to discuss three redesign options for the Sarasota Bayfront and the Van Wazel. There are two meetings today that you can get involved in and share your thoughts. They're both going to be taking place at the Van Wazel. One's at 830 this morning, another one at 130 this afternoon. And number four now, the State College of Florida's Venice campus recently applied to create a charter collegiate high school in the South County. That move would allow students to get college credits while they're still in high school. And number five, this week marks one year since Florida's first diverging diamond interchange opened right there at I-75 and University Parkway. Coming up tonight on ABC 7 News at 6, Erica Jackson shares just how much crashes have gone down in the last year thanks to the diamond. Number six, tonight is game six of the Eastern Conference Finals. Can you believe it? The Lightning lead now three games to two. If they were to win tonight, that'd be one step closer to that Stanley Cup. Puck drops 8 p.m. in D.C. tonight. All right, finally, number seven, and then there were three. Last night on American Idol, we heard from all three of the finalists during last night's show. We heard from all of them as well as what they hope for tonight. And tonight, I am so jealous. Each finalist gets a special duet. Darius Rucker, Luke Bryan, Judge, now getting in the mix. And my favorite, Kermit the Frog. You can watch the finale yeah. of American Idol tonight at 9 o'clock right here on ABC7. If you guys could duet with somebody famous in history, who oh, would you dear. like to I sing with? Uh, Miss Piggy then, yeah. Miss no. Piggy. Faith Hill. Faith Hill? Okay, that's a good choice. Foster Florence Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody whose okay. voice is worse than mine. Okay. <laughs> I knew right. he'd say that. What the heck? Okay. We leave you now with a shot of the overcast bayfront looking toward Longboat Key. Thanks for watching. Good morning, Suncoast. Good morning, America's up next.